Welcome to Armstrong High School for a non-conference matchup in boys basketball as number one Wyzetta makes the trip across Plymouth to take on the Armstrong Falcons. Hi, I'm Jay Wilcox along with former Robbinsdale Robin and Armstrong head coach Greg Miller. And Greg, you can look at this a couple ways if you're Armstrong, a big opportunity. If they could knock off Wyzetta or at least really push them, it'd be a big thing for them. On the other hand, they want to don't want to get too many flaws exposed late in the season like this, too. I really like that they're playing each other this close to playoffs and they're in the same section. They're not ducking each other. Uh, I think that for Armstrong, it's really good to be playing a team of the Wyzetta's quality because it does show you what you have and what you need to work on here maybe to be at a competitive level to go to the state tournament, and that's what it's all about. And then for Wyzetta, you know, um, they've been playing a really tough schedule lately as well. Uh, they just played De La Salle, and of course they play in their league. So, um, and I know Armstrong plays Creighton Durham Hall next week too. So I, I like that they're both loading up their schedules at the end. Armstrong, as we talked about when we had them a couple weeks ago, slow start to the year, but have been playing pretty well of late. They did lose on Friday night at Maple Grove, but that's a pretty good opponent. They lost by five. I think the trend has certainly been good for them in the second half of the season. Definitely. The Newbert injury at the beginning of the season really hurt them, and it's really helped getting him back. I looked there 10 and 3 um, since January 3rd. So Armstrong's been playing really well. Um, they they got really elite quickness, um, they can rebound. You know, they're, they're going to have to share the ball maybe just a little bit better than I saw last time and really play as a team to have a chance against a team like Wyzetta. Wyzetta has been pretty lights out this year, just the one loss. Uh, I thought it was very interesting that uh, Brian Schnettler, their head coach, said he feels like in a lot of ways they're playing better overall right now, but maybe not shooting it quite as well as they were early in the season. Yeah, I mean, they have a certain style they like to play. They like to play really fast, um, take it to the rim, spread you out. And I know they're trying to get Jackson McAndrew the ball down in the paint. And um, he's a guy who likes to you know, shoot threes, and that's probably what he's going to do a lot of when he goes to Creighton University. But um, he's been you know, buying into the team concept, getting down low, uh, and that's really helping them. So you know, trying to work out some of those things, get their big man who likes to shoot threes down low, and trying to get your fast pace of play going is definitely something that they've been getting better at as they go. A lot of good players on both these teams, but we've picked out a couple to talk about as our key players for tonight. And uh, starting with the Trojans, really talented sophomore and Christian Wiggins. Yeah, they got a couple of great sophomore guards, and Wiggins is a dynamic player. He's got beautiful form on his shot. He's athletic. He's 6'4". Uh, you know, he can get to the rim. He's a little you know, skinny because he's only a sophomore. As he gets stronger, I mean, he's going to be a dominant player in the late conference. But, uh, you know, right now he's really a really good player. Um, so I'm excited to watch him play today. And a guy who's got similar scoring stats for him on the other side of the coin, a much different player, though, Desmond Ware runs the point for the Falcons. Yeah, Desmond's had um, some really, really good games. Um, he's working on consistency. Um, he's going to have to play a great game tonight for them to have a chance. Um, I'd like to see him. You know, he, I, We know he can score. Can he get in the paint? Can he deliver and get wide open shots for his guys? Because they're going to load up on him. They're going to try to make it um, hard on him. But he's having a real good year. Now this one could be a playoff preview, perhaps. Wyzetta certainly figures to be the number one seed in Section 6-4A as it stands now. And Armstrong probably will end up in the 4-5 game, uh, the way things are shaking out right now anyway. So there's a, certainly a possibility that they could be looking at a playoff meeting as they had last year. Stay tuned. It is the Trojans and the Falcons boys basketball coming up next here on CCX Sports. CCX Media, your source for great local programming, is available on Amazon Fire TV, Apple TV, and Roku. Our free app allows you to stream all three of our channels live. You also have access to a large on-demand library, including full sporting events and daily newscasts. To find us, go to the store, search CCX, and download our free app. Then sit back and enjoy all of your favorite local content. The CCX Media app, available on Amazon Fire TV, Apple TV, and Roku. set for basketball here a pair of 23s Fitz Freeman and Jackson McAndrew jumping it up McAndrew getting up late but gets that tip and Wyzetta with first possession here we're out there defending Isaac Olmstead here's the lob underneath and Wiggins spinning but not able to get it to go and Newburn the rebound nice set play to start the game back screen for Wiggins just didn't finish Seth Newburn dropping it off. Freeman and they rotate it around. 
Fitz Freeman turning, the lefty goes up inside, no good, McAndrew boards it. I like that strategy, go inside, maybe you can pick up some fouls, and McAndrew, nice job of walling up by McAndrew. Olmstead into the lane, a stop and pop jumper there, 2-0 Wyzetta. A pair of dynamic sophomore guards here for the Trojans. Ware into the front court with Wiggins checking him. Quite a size difference there. Freeman kicking it over. Open look for Duncan, but it won't drop. Nice rebound to Von Fields, and he scores it inside. Big bucket for a guy who's not the biggest guy to go in there and get an offensive rebound. I like the action by Armstrong, high pick and roll, and nice pass by Freeman to the corner. Nepstead will give it over to Olmstead. Quick little crossover and another jumper cutting through the lane. That's impressive skill. Nice crossover, hit that mid-range. Ware trying to answer. That one's off the side of the glass. Jackson McAndrew the rebound. You're not going to be able to drive into crowds against these guys. It's, they got too much height. Back out to the corner. Sandman shooting it up, and McAndrew runs it down. I'm sure if you're going to win this game, you're going to have to not give up second shot. Olmstead a three. He has seven early points at seven to two Trojans. And that was definitely one of the things Rob Ware mentioned is we can't give them second opportunities. And then when you've lost your shooters, they find them and quickly uh, take advantage. And Jackson is a very active on the board. It's going to be hard to keep him out, but you got to at least get a body on him. Freeman will take that jumper from the top of the key. There's another rebound for McAndrew. Averages about no, over nine a game. Nepstad all the way for the layup. And Freeman, I think uh, even though they're backing off him, he should pass the ball to the wing and go set a ball screen. That's not his shot. Everyone's got to play within the team concept for Armstrong to have a chance in this game. Duncan giving it over to Fields. McAndrew swipes it. McAndrew, a little Euro step move, couldn't finish it though. Saved in and it'll be Olmstead up with it. McAndrew, a step back jumper on the baseline, no good. And tipped over to Ware. Like Coach Stentler said there, they haven't been shooting the three as, as well as they were earlier in the season and they're, they're not starting out shooting that hot. Duncan's pull up jumper will bounce around and drop. So a nine to four lead now for Wyzetta. Olmstead a Beautiful. nice dish. Nepstead at a block, but it's going to be a foul call on Seth Newburn. Yeah, he refused, refused that high ball screen there, and he's lightning quick and got a great crossover and then a great no look pass inside. It was beautiful. Look at the starters here in tonight's contest, and Nepstead missing on the free throw opportunity. Wyatt Macbeth checking in now for the Trojans, number 15. And Coach really likes Macbeth when I was talking to him before the game, says he does a lot of good stuff for them. Very active player, good athlete. Second free throw is good by Nepstead. And also in now for Wyzetta, Ben Schaefer, number three. Teams met twice a year ago. The regular season meeting came very early in the year and a, a 10 point win for Wyzetta. And then in the section semifinals, they knocked the Falcons out. Not quite as close a game when all was said and done, an 18 point game. Yeah, I'm glad they're playing each other. Newburn, a pull up jumper and he nails it. He passed 1000 career points last week and smooth jumper there. Falcons back to within four. The Falcons are gonna need Newburn to have a huge game for them to win this game. That was a real nice jumper there. Schaefer getting down the lane, scoops it up and in. Duncan back out to where. Or is it just switching the ball screen? That's a luxury they have. Their bigs are very athletic. They can guard guards. Ware will turn and shoot, no good. McAndrew, another rebound, and he'll throw it long ahead. Olmstead, wow. a nice drop back to Wiggins for two. Great court awareness. 
Yeah, Olmstead's a really special player. And he's he only a sophomore. Look, yeah, he was looking where he was going to go with that before the ball even got to him. And McAndrew does a good job of, when he gets the rebound, he gets the ball over his head and he looks for the outlet. Freeman inside, his pass was tipped. It'll stay with Armstrong. I do like the idea of going into Freeman, and Freeman doesn't have to try to force it, he shoot it every once in a while, but he'll hopefully draw some double and then kick it. This is where he really gets his head up and makes that nice chest pass up there. And a nice, nice touch pass for Wiggins. Joel Saw, number 11, has checked in here for Armstrong, and he has the ball right now. I really like Saw as a point guard. He's only a sophomore, lightning quick, makes good decisions, and can move where over to the shooting guard, which I think uh, helps them sometimes. Trying to go inside to Duncan, and first Wiggins got a piece of it, then McAndrew, but it's saved in. Armstrong will get another crack. Good scrap by Duncan there. Freeman missing inside. He didn't really get squared up. Trying to draw a foul, but it didn't happen. And Duncan with the steal, and Newburn out ahead of the field, and Newburn will hammer it. One thing I noticed about Armstrong last time we did the game is they have real good hands. They get a lot of deflections, and they did it right there. So has got, you know, they've been taking care of the ball good so far, but they made a mistake there. McAndrew on the back cut gets the layup. Good timing and spacing there for the Trojans. Where was tied up? Let's see, will this be a foul or a jump ball? Official's going to huddle up quick. Looks like they got foul first. And they will get Macbeth on the reach in. McAndrew has great timing inside on defense, too, and he, he doesn't get in foul trouble. You can tell how he plays. He just uses his feet, walls up, and then jumps at the last second to alter shots. Eli Kempel is in number 15 for Armstrong. Newburn looking to attack and was held by Wiggins, it looked like. Yeah, it looked like maybe before the shot, but I don't know. Oh, two shots. Yeah, it is going to be in. Oh, it's on number two. On okay, line, yeah. yeah. Duncan looking to attack. He's cut off. And Kempel's pass swiped away there by Schaefer. Schaefer all the way for the layup. I don't even know if he could see the ball, but he was just playing denial defense there and got his hand up. That was it. Does a nice job of getting up in the passing lanes, moving their feet. Saw is fouled as he drove that ball in. Contact drawn from Daniel. Uh, Grubasek there for the Trojans will pick up his first. Just sliding over to the right a little bit. He was in pretty good position, but. Ten-point Trojans lead. Macbeth will whip it out to Wiggins, driving into the lane, and a nice dish and an easy two for Grubasek. And Trojans, it seemed like Armstrong was playing fairly well. Now you look up, and it's back to a 12-point margin. They do such a good job of getting open shots, whether it be one like that or an open look at a three. They, they, they move the ball well. They space it well. Yeah, they're looking for the open man all the time when they're driving. Like, he thought he was going to go up and force up and get a charge, but he dishes it off. They've been doing that the whole game. They play a really good you know, system. Coach Schnettler, when he came here, he really emphasized team basketball, and you can tell they're not always the biggest guys, too. Like, they got a lot of guys who look, you know, thin, but they're lightning quick, very skilled. You can tell they work on their game a lot, and um, they just play a great style of basketball that's fun to watch, and it's been very successful. They won state two of the last three years, kind of broke the Hopkins curse too. And, uh, they hadn't beaten Hopkins in years, and you know they um, hadn't been to state since the 1950s, and Brian was able to, you know, with his team, get them there, and um, they're, they're a really fun team to watch. 
And from everything that I hear, they've been pretty dominant at the youth levels on the way up, too. I, you talk to various people, and they're like, oh, yeah, we got smoked by Wayzata in sixth yeah. grade basketball or whatever. And they, I mean, to be fair, they have a lot of kids in their school, yes. too, and there's a lot of competition and at the youth levels, too. The, you know, like two of Armstrong's almost fit in one of Wayzata, but, you know, that doesn't mean you're going to be guaranteed to be good, and Coach Schnett's a great coach. And I like the press, too, here. Oh, and that re quickly results in an easy layup for McBath. Armstrong wasn't ready for that and careless with the ball. And I don't think you're going to see why Zeta let up either. Um, you know, they want to make, make a statement to Armstrong if they play him in the semis. Oh, going to be an offensive foul on McBath after they got the turnover again, and he'll pick up his second. Good job by Desmond there. And Hmm, he called it 22. Obviously, it was 15 who had the ball there. And it, fell. And it was a good call, and he extended his arm as well, and Desmond was in position. They normally don't trap too much out of this. Armstrong could just clear out and let someone bring it up, I think, but they're, they're thinking they might trap, because some games they do. Evan Johnson in there defending Ware, and he will commit the foul there. McAndrew up top with a clean block, but the body foul had already been committed there. Sometimes when they're, you know, denying the passing lanes and that, it does leave open lanes, and Desmond's good at getting to the rack, so it was good to draw a foul there. He's a good, good free throw shooter, too. That's the thing. You, it's sometimes can be tough to keep match the scoring pace Wyzetta is able to put up. Armstrong's offense hasn't been terrible tonight. It's been okay, but at the defensive end, Wyzetta is just able to break you down so so often. They're not the only team. There's a nice dish yeah. inside, and Sandman able to finish off the Olmstead assist. Wyzetta doesn't have to worry about the shot clock going off. No. I was talking to Coach Schnett before the game, and uh, he told me that he was worried that their defense was giving up too many points. Oh, going to be an offensive foul. No basket. So pushed off with his right arm. Ware will be called for the foul. So if Freeman doesn't get the layup, it'll be on the pass off a foul on Ware. But when he looked um, at the points per possession, it was the same as it's been with the state championship teams. And he just said they just have more possessions this year than they even have with those teams. McAndrew steps out and nails a three. He has five points. Unbelievable skill on this team. Ooh, and Duncan airmails that one over Ware's head down in the corner. And for one of the first times, Armstrong's kind of starting to look around a little discouraged here. They got to keep their heads up. Yeah, when, when you got a game like this again and the team gets a big lead on you, you just got to try to go back to the basics and just try to make one play at a time, play some defense too. McAndrew a three from the other side. How about that one? 30-9 to nine, Trojan. Showing why he's such a coveted recruit and... He's uh, committed to go play at Creighton University for my good friend Greg McDermott, who I've known for about 30 years. Great coach, great program. Yeah, Jackson has to be on the very short list of best players in the state this year, I would say. That's not a stretch. For sure. Duncan a miss here. McAndrew the rebound, and he'll throw it out long. Olmstead bouncing off the defender and gets the layup. And boy, the wheel's coming off for Armstrong right now. It just seemed relatively close not too long ago, and now at 32 to 9. And a timeout taken, and this is what Wyzetta does to people quite yeah. often. <laughs> yeah, it reminds me of um, playing Hopkins back in the day. They kind of play that style where they're super fast, and you know they're kind of like the, the new Hopkins, to be honest, like when Hopkins used to dominate Minnesota basketball. Um, Schnettler's got these guys lo looking like they might win a maybe a third state title in the last four years. It's definitely a possibility. Well, and the thing is, though, sometimes when you talk about teams who play fast, you say... They take bad shots or questionable shots, but that's not, they're, they play fast and get really good clean looks a lot of the time. They do. And look how many players have already played and contributed too. There, there gets back to what you said about the, the depth of the program. They're not just putting guys out there to give somebody a rest and hoping they don't do anything wrong. They're, no. they're out there making plays. And they always have people from different levels. It seems like they always have sophomores, juniors, and seniors playing. So then the next year, they got guys coming back and who are really talented with some experience. 
Inside to Freeman, to the cutter where with the finger roll. Nice touch on that one and a nice pass too. That was nice to come on and respond after a timeout. Get something positive. Olmstead, nice dish. Nepstead missed it inside though. Armstrong, when they're driving, they're getting penetration, so then they're losing track of their man and they're getting back cut on the baseline. You got to be able to see both your man and the ball. But well, he does a nice job of cutting back door on the drive. Newburn pass picked off there by Sandman. Olmstead dropping it off. Nepstead this time will finish it. He missed the last one this time. Able to give his teammate the assist there as he finishes that. Yeah, Coach Bryan has got to love the assist uh, ratio that they're having in this game. There's Freeman off the window and good for his first basket. A nice, kind of a key player move. for them in some of their games this year, you know, given that inside presence a little bit. De especially on defense, you know, he definitely changes shots and they like to pressure the ball so guys are going to get by him sometimes and he's there to to make a difference down there. Newburn missing on the drive. Freeman, though, gets it back and scores. Good. Armstrong's responding a little bit here and like I said, you, you don't have to worry about the score at all. I mean, this it's got to chip away and see what happens. I like how Newburn's getting tough there on the ball. McAndrew, oh, that was a sweet move. Just a little hesitation back and forth to the left hand, wow. scooping it in. What an yes, impressive that's move. That's a nice shot. And that doesn't come by mistake. He's practiced that a lot. Duncan, let's see, what do we got here? Going to be a blocking foul. <laughs> Looked like pretty good D to me. Johnson will pick up his second. That's one of those where even though the call doesn't go your way, I think you still say good job, Evan. Definitely. I can, it could go either way. I mean, he's sliding a little bit. But. Jack Simon reporting in number 33 now for YZ. Wiggins is back in also. Newburn giving it to Ware up at the top. Freeman looking to turn and go at McAndrew. And that one will spin out. Nice rebound, though, by Duncan. No good, but he's fouled as he got himself underneath and able to secure an offensive rebound. That's good that Freeman's not backing down. I mean, he's going to hit a few of those, and I like how he faced the basket, and he drove into him, got his body into him. But, again, McAndrew played really good defense and just walled up. Nice to see the offensive rebound there for the Falcons. Duncan's an impressive athlete. It's like the third time I've seen him this year, and he, he, he can definitely get up and get rebounds. They really need him to do some of the dirty work. Makes one out of two at the line, so the lead is 20 for the Trojans. Wiggins retrieves that one. Oh, and there's Newburn up with the steal. Looking for another dunk, perhaps? Nope, this time he'll lay it in. Third basket for Seth Newburn. Good anticipation, getting in the passing lane. Newburn's a great defender. Wiggins missing on the three. Saw attacking back the other direction. McAndrew, though, with the block. McAndrew, a long distance three. That one won't go and fields the rebound. If you're Armstrong, if you get this to like 10 or 12 at half, that'd be the goal if I was the coach right now. And you know, just again, one play at a time, but they're starting to make some better plays and get a little more comfortable. Sometimes you get nervous playing the number one or two team in the state too. Freeman had that one get away. The ball was kicked. It'll be Armstrong ball, looks like. Both 15s now back in. Kempel for Armstrong, Macbeth for Wyzetta. Newburn will inbound from the baseline. Armstrong down 36-18 here against number one, Wyzetta. Fields double dribble. He was in a lot of traffic when they threw that one in. That one was kind of a tough one. Nice out-of-bounds play by Armstrong, but um, they tried to clear out the baseline. 
Unfortunately for them, Wyzetta, well-schooled on defense, was there to help on the midline. Olmstead coming to the top, missing on the three. In fact, that was a, maybe a set play coming off a down screen and he's ready to fire. Saw getting it over to Newburn for a three. That one is short, nice rebound by Wiggins. Olmstead down in the corner will keep the drive going and then Freeman got a piece of that pass. Macbeth on the baseline. Here's Schaefer spinning. Temple knocked it away and gets the steal. Good D by Eli. Over to Saul for the layup. A good defensive possession there by Armstrong because Wazetta was making them work and they stayed in position this time and, and did, get a, did not give up an easy pass. And it's going to be an offensive foul on Olmstead. Newburn is, for one of the many things he does well, is draw charges. That's something they really take pride in. It kind of fires up his teammates, too. He'll stand in there and take a hit. Yeah, this is um, the third or fourth Newburn I've seen play, and they all are well schooled in taking the charge. Their brother Bijan might have been the best at that. Ware will bring it up against Wiggins as we approach five minutes to go in the first half. Wyzetta blowing this one open. Armstrong kind of chipping away back into it a little bit, down 16 though still. They're definitely playing better here in the last three minutes. Luke Prem, number four, is in for Armstrong. Ooh, and we will get a foul call against the Trojans. They thought they had a steal, but gonna get Olmstead, I believe. Well, Wyzetta plays very aggressive when you do that, you're gonna probably get more fouls than the opponent. Armstrong has to actually pick up their aggressiveness, I think. Um, you know, move their feet, keep your man in front of you. And not just, you know, either backing off a little bit and let them get ahead of steam sometimes. McAndrew and Nepstead back in for the Trojans as Ware nails the free throw. He now has four points. And hits a pair, 36-22. That's one of the many little things they're going to need to do tonight if they want to stay in this game is make their free throws. McAndrew with Duncan on him. He kicks it out for a three from Wiggins. Won't go, but McAndrew the rebound. Nepstead back up top. Schaefer for three. No good. There's McAndrew, another rebound, and Kempel fouled him. I was watching Duncan try to box out and he was doing a good job, but he's, you know, the ball comes up high like that, and not much you can do against a 6'10 guy. Lob into McAndrew, a little step back here, and he hits that little one foot step back. Dirk Nowitzki look. He's a special player, offensively gifted. 16 point lead for Wyzetta. We're getting it to Freeman. And that deflected, but it gets to Duncan ultimately. Another deflection, Macbeth with the steal. You can't make careless passes against Wyzetta or it'll be going the other way. And there's Duncan stealing it back. That's a good job on Duncan getting back after he made that pass. Fields to Prem out of the corner and he nails a three. Luke Prem, he's a good shooter. I coach both his brothers, great kids. Wiggins, ooh, that'll be a block as Prem tried to draw the charge. Instead, it'll be Wiggins going to the free throw line. It's hard to come off the bench like that too when you're not getting a lot of playing time and you know, you're a good three-point shooter but you're not warm and to knock that down, that was big, big for Luke. Armstrong, good. they had it to 13. Like I said, if you can get it to 10 or 12 the way you started this game, you, you got to be happy with that. And I think Wazetta, you know, seemed maybe to lose some of their intensity with that big lead. It's just human nature, but um, I'm sure they'll pick it back up. And not hitting quite as many shots from outside as they were earlier in the game either. Everything was pretty well flowing, and, um, you know, they've had a few misses of late. 
even though McAndrew oftentimes has given them a second crack at it with offensive yeah. rebounds. And they're shooting a lot of threes, and they were earlier getting a lot of layups just by driving and, and dishing. Duncan works his way into the front court. McAndrew switching out onto Ware. Not sure what they're trying to do here. They're trying to get organized. Oh, the backdoor play they're trying to set up, I think. Is this tipped? I don't think so. That wasn't a very good possession for Armstrong at all. Yeah, I think they were trying to get some kind of backdoor action. I don't know if the coach called the player, if Desmond did, but they couldn't quite get organized on it. Well, and that's the thing where that pressure on defense gets you into the clock a little bit more. Even if it doesn't result in a steal or anything like that, it's still effective for Wyzetta. True. McAndrew at the baseline. Freeman did a pretty decent job walling off on him that time. He'll shoot a three from the corner. And Trojans get another crack. Macbeth stepping back to shoot a three. This time Duncan boards it. We're attacking, and he scores. You got to make ways out of pay. They send four guys to the glass every time, and if you do get the rebound, I like what Armstrong did there. Just push it and try to get a layup. It was a great finish by Desmond, too. Good wall up there by B. Or Seth Newburn. By Newburn. <laughs> Seth. We're shooting a runner there. Not a very easy shot attempt. A high level of difficulty on that one. Wiggins driving it. This will be a blocking foul. He just slid his hip a little bit to the right. That'll be number two on Newburn. It'll be interesting to see if they keep him in or not. Yeah, I mean, you love your guys to take a charge. I mean, Seth's got to be careful now because he can't get his third doing that. That's that's a problem. You really got to make sure you're set if it happens again. And that so time, he just back, yeah. sorry, he just wasn't quite set on that one. Armstrong can't really afford to take Newburn out. I mean, even if he does get in foul trouble. A little trapping action here by Wyzetta. They've been doing too much of that. 15-point game, approaching two minutes to go in this first half. Duncan around to where. Looking for the post up, but Freeman pushed out off the block a little bit. Made a pretty good move to the middle, then over to Duncan. Passed up an open look. He'll dribble left and nail it. I like that action Armstrong ran. They got a switch, and then they got their big guy posted up on a guard. A smart play. Wiggins the drive, and then kicks it over. McAndrew, tough shot here, and he nails a three. Wow. Freeman actually defended that one pretty yeah. well. It's amazing that's a three-pointer. It makes it look so effortless. And he does it off the dribble, which a lot of people can't do. Where the drive and kick. Duncan on an open look, but that one wouldn't go. Love that play by Desmond, though. For Armstrong to be successful in this game, they're going to have to hit some threes, and he just got him a wide open one. Wiggins the miss. It's out off of Boisetta. Good effort by Sandman there, but not quite able to save it. And for Desmond, you got to trust your teammates and do it again. I mean, if it happens again, just because he missed a shot, he'll make the next one. So got to keep doing that kind of action. Yeah, it was still the right play, even though it yep. didn't go in. Under a minute to go. Wyzetta by 16. You got a back cut here. And they deny you got to go back door and replace. They want Freeman again here. Nice help defense though. Under 10 is Newburn cutting left hand layup, wouldn't go. And normally Newburn would have just shot a right hand layup, but with McAndrew chasing you from behind, he knew he had to do a reverse. And again, another high level difficulty shot just because McAndrews makes it difficult down there. Ware is called for the reach in foul. Six team foul, so they're not uh, in the bonus here, 24 seconds to go. Mazetta can play it for the last shot. They lead it by 16. 
I think if you're Coach Schnettler, you're somewhat satisfied with the half. Um, you're mm, they turn it over here. You're really happy with how you started, but then, um, you know, kind of getting a little bit sloppy, maybe taking some early threes. Defensively following maybe a little bit too much, so I thought it wasn't as good of the end of the half for them. And then Armstrong, to their credit, um, you know, they regrouped a little bit. And, you know, once they got down by 18, they at least not let that lead increase. Be a big bucket if Armstrong could get one here. We're launching one, and he banks it in for three. Desmond Ware helping Armstrong end the half on a good note as they will pull to within 13 on that long bank. Our halftime score here is YZ 45 and Armstrong 32. That first half highlights and stats and then our second half of basketball coming up. Boys Hoops on CCX Sports. Welcome back here to Armstrong as YZ, the top-ranked team in 4A, leading 45-32, although a little bit of an interesting way to get there as YZ really blew things open. We're up by 20, and Armstrong chipped away to get back in it. We'll take a look at highlights from the opening half. It was very much a great start for YZ, and then things kind of slowed for them as the half went down. Olmstead started out very good, a couple of early mid-range jumpers uh, into the lane for him. Duncan getting the miss here, but Fields, not one of the bigger guys out there, but gets a put back there for the Falcons. Good rotation down to Olmstead as he popped a corner three. And after the steal, it's Newburn getting up for the dunk for Armstrong, one of his three buckets in that opening half. Couple looks at that. Wiggins a really nice drive and dish there and they get the easy two set up for Rubisek there and then McAndrew really went off for a bit here. He's got a variety of things he does well and uh, he showed a lot of them. <laughs> Hopping threes from each side and swooping in for a variety of uh, there's another three there. And Cream knocking down a three just after coming into the game on the pass out to the corner. And then right to end the half here, where it kind of looked like he had nowhere to go. He knew he had to get that shot up, and he banked it in to pull them to within 13. So it's not often that you feel like they sort of have the momentum pulling within 13, but that's sort of how it looked. Because McAndrew 15 and Olmstead 9, Wigan 6 to lead the way for Wyzetta. Ware with 10, Newburn 6, and Duncan had 5 for Armstrong. So we will come back with our second half of basketball here. It's a battle for Plymouth bragging rights here, both high schools in the city of Plymouth here. Why is that a 45 and Armstrong 32? CCX Media is the first place you go for local news and sports. But did you know you can sign up for those stories to go straight to your inbox on our website? Simply go to ccxmedia.org. Click on the subscribe button, and from there, choose which notifications you want to receive. Then we'll send your favorite CCX Media news, sports, and city events straight to your inbox. Sign up now at ccxmedia.org.
And set for second half action here as Wyzetta and Armstrong doing battle here in this late season matchup. For Armstrong, I think they got to get the ball moving a little bit more and, and play with a little more flow. And they're doing a lot of 1-4 stuff, trying to get some sets and things. But I think, you know, create some gaps by getting the ball moved side to side and, and get it moving would be helpful. Be interesting to see if Wyzetta cranks up the pressure here. They can't be happy with how the last six minutes of the half went. Inside to Freeman, going up and over. Nepstead, he missed it. He gets it back. Oh, going to be a foul on Freeman, it looks like. And call him for over the back. A tough break there. Looked like he, even though he did go over him, but I don't know if he made contact. He has, he has long arms. Too bad he didn't finish this one. I like how he went up. He could have got a foul call there. Yeah. I mean, you, I mean, I'm not saying I'm mad if they make the call, but they, they could have won either way. Olmstead giving it up to Wiggins inside for McAndrew, powers it up and in. Great play there to clear out the backside help. And if that happens, you got to be screaming on defense or get someone down there in the weak side help. But it was a nice, nicely designed play to get that hap to happen. Ware into the lane, no good. Freeman gets the rebound and then back out to Ware. Good hustle play by Freeman. Duncan looking to attack. Gets it out to Newburn and he hits a three. Why is that asking where's the travel? But they don't get it. Ahead to Nepstad. He's going to turn and go up and score it. Well, it definitely collapses if you can penetrate. That's why I'm just saying. If you get the ball moving side to side, then get some penetration. Like right now, they're standing there waiting for you. So they're trying to get organized. But I'd like to see the ball moving instead of staying in one place. We're driving dish to fields and no good, but he was fouled. He was a little worried about the shot blockers inside. He might have been able to go up right away with that one, it looked like. But Wiggins will be called for the foul. It was a nice play, though, by Armstrong. They set up a side pick and roll. And Desmond did a real nice job. And Wojtyla didn't cover down. Did uh, was that what was that was doing Armstrong early in the game? Nice play by Desmond. Fields with his third point. He had the game-winning three in the against Champlain Park here in the uh, game we had for you on CCX a couple weeks back. He's a good three-point shooter, and they got to get him open. I've been watching closely enough to see if they're locking a guy on him, but I don't think so. I think they just rotate, and um, if they can get some penetration, they can kick it out to him. He can make some threes. 12 point game, closest Armstrong's been in quite a while. Trying to go down Drew. inside. Nice, oh, he dishes off. And Salmon wasn't ready for it, maybe throwing a little too hard there too. McAndrew could have certainly shot that ball himself, tried to give it up for a layup and, and uh, weren't quite ready. I like that they're trying to get the ball inside. I mean, that's one thing um, when you're a big that can shoot threes, you wanna float around the perimeter all the time. So sometimes you have to do set plays like they just did there to get it inside. But McAndrew's a good teammate, and he knows they need him to go inside and score, too. Freeman turns too strong with that one. He got it back, though, and then bounced it on the end line. Yeah, Freeman's getting good looks. He's just not finishing them, and, you know, that can kind of get frustrating for the rest of the players. If, you know, how many times are we going to keep throwing it into you if, you if you can't make them? But they're doing the right approach, I think. Wiggins attacking down the baseline, and then he throws it away. And Ware did a smart thing by letting Olmstead get to that ball first, so it would be an over and back. Armstrong's been creating quite a few turnovers in this game. They've been doing a nice job of pressuring and making them make some difficult passes. And it's a part of it's why that is being a little bit sloppy, too. They're not as laser-focused as they were to start the game. One four horn set here. Where keeps the dribble going, no good on the shot. And Trojans come away with it. Sandman. See how Wayzetta gets that ball flying around. Wiggins driving, but then lost it just as he was about to go up. 
Fields to Newburn. Spins it up and in around McAndrew. Beautiful. We've got a 10 point game right here. Armstrong definitely not feeling intimidated anymore. I think they're feeling a little more comfortable. Olmstead wouldn't go out of bounds off of Nepstead as it took an extra bounce on the rim. Newburn was already on the way down. One of the strengths of Armstrong is they got very quick hands, and so they've been able to get some steals and get some breaks like this, and what an acrobatic play there. Seth Newburn is an elite athlete, and he showed it there. You get this under 10 here with a nice possession. Rare keeps the dribble going, missed it inside, though. That would have been a big bucket. Olmstead dropping it back. McAndrew will give it to Macbeth and gets it up and in. And when you make a, a missed shot like that, you just got to get back into action and, and flush it and just play. Newburn drives into the lane and scores it as he switched back to the right hand. Yeah, nice New hoop. Newburn's a problem for Wyzetta. They got to you know, keep moving the ball around and he'll get some definite ISO attacks. Ooh, the Red Sea parts there for Olmstead for an easy layup. And timeout taken as it's back to a 12 point game. Armstrong, if nothing else, has made Wyzetta feel that they're there, that they, they're right. back uh, competing. It's a, you know, it doesn't feel like there's a ton of energy in the gym. It's like, I don't know if the Armstrong fans don't believe when they start making a run. You know, it's not like getting loud and it's kind of like, oh, you know, we're making some plays here, but I mean, it'd be nice if um, Armstrong got the home crowd advantage here a little bit to spur him on. And Wyzetta, I think you said it earlier, they, they were very sharp early and it's not been, it just hasn't come as smooth and easy yeah. for them since then. I, I wouldn't say they're playing terrible, but they're not probably playing as well as they can. And again, that's lack of energy in the gym. Sometimes it rubs off on both teams and you, you, you know, Wyzetta is not playing with the intensity that they were early in the game either. But I credit Armstrong a lot too. I mean, I know they're a lot better than they played to start this game. And they, they've been showing it recently. And they got some good players. I mean, they won six games in a row, I think, and 10 of their last 13, so. Turn over there as Freeman's pass behind Ware. It's not a lot of flow either way. Schaefer back in there now, Nepstead. They set a screen out for McAndrew and he buries a three. Not yeah. a bad play to come out of uh, that sequence with. Little flare screen, in screen there for McAndrew to tell that he knew he was gonna let that thing fly. I think a lot of times when you run set plays like that, you know you're gonna get it. it seems like you make, players make a high percentage of those, no guilt, just get it and shoot it. Fields taking that three, it'll spin off, McAndrew a rebound. I always feel like part of that is that's how you practice shots like that. True. You, you do the cut, you catch, you shoot. And there's Olmstead again. He's got such good bounce when he gets into the lane and just stops hard that jump stop and buries it. Yeah, that's really tough to defend because he's so quick and he can handle it. Schaefer will be called for the foul there. Rosetta was trying to get a little something going. It is back up to 17. Yeah, they had a chance to cut it to eight on a, on a layup about a minute ago, and now it's 17 already. He's you know, got so much firepower that in the blink of an eye, they can go in a 10-0 run. Newburn attacking, spins and scores with the left hand. He's had a heck of a second half. The rest of the Falcons got to pick up the intensity like Newburn has. 15-point game now for Wyzetta. Schaefer, a step back wow. three, and he nails it. I mean, if I'm a coach, I'm happy with the defense there. Like, if that's the best shot they're going to get, I'm happy with that, but it was a heck of a shot. Saw driving it down the lane and gets it to fall. Armstrong's having some success, some success driving them this half. Right, they got to continue to do that.
Olmstead. Turnaround, tough jumper, and he wow. hits it again. That wasn't too bad a D by Shaw. No, those are difficult shots. 18 point lead again for Wyzetta. Freeman back out for Fields, and it won't go. And then a tie up on the rebound. That one took an extra bounce on the rim, too. McAndrew was, had already come down. Duncan tied him up. Good job by Duncan there getting on the offensive glass. He's done that a couple times today. Wiggins back in here for Wyzetta. McAndrew puts it on the deck. Freeman scrambling back into position. Schaefer will launch that long one. And Wiggins up for the board. His step back three is short. And they'll get another crack at it though. Rubisek runs it down. Now Macbeth from the corner, no good. And here's Schaefer and he will score as they hurt the Falcons with offensive boards again. It's a 20 point game. Two of those shots I thought were questionable. I mean, kind of not the best shot selection, but if you get the rebound every time, it doesn't matter. Inside to Newburn, no good in traffic. And a long throw ahead. Schaefer is going to drop it back for the dunk. Grubasek. And now Wyzetta's got it going. They're up 22 points, and they get a technical foul. Yeah, a little taunting uh, after that. He kind of yelled at Freeman after he dunked it. That's a good learning experience because you do not want that to happen in the state tournament or in the section final game or something like that. Great outlet pass again, like he's been doing another beautiful pass. And if you keep the camera on, you'll see. I just clapped in his face a little bit. Mm. It depends. Some refs are more sensitive than that than others, and I know that ref, uh, <laughs> and he definitely um, doesn't like any of that kind of stuff that he considers not sportsmanlike. In general, I'm with him on that, but I don't know. That one didn't look like a whole lot. And we don't know what he said either. Yeah, that's true. But I think if you look right at a guy and you clap your hands, I've seen that even called in the NBA sometimes. Although they're disappointed with the T, I'm sure the recent trend though for Wyzetta, they built the lead back up to 22. Yeah, they're definitely playing with um, more intensity. When they get a stop, they really can run. You gotta get back on defense if you're Armstrong. Where at the free throw line nails it. One more coming. He has a dozen now, and Armstrong will have the ball as well, of course, which they would have anyway after that made basket, but. So the lead at 20 now with 10.45 to go. Saw driving and bounces around but won't drop and Simon the rebound. Armstrong's got a lot of nice looks to the rim but was that a definitely alter shots and it makes it hard to finish. McAndrew getting a breather at the moment. Macbeth into traffic. Good D by the Falcons there. And Kempel takes it. Kempel, very competitive player. Here's Ware with the layup and one. Why is that up? Probably wishing they had just kind of conceded that one as fouled him after he'd already gotten the ball up on the rim. This is the second time that uh, Eli Kempel has got a steal and then convert, turned it into a fast break. He's a real good football player too. He's a tough kid. Great finish there at the left hand by Ware. And Ware completes the three point play. So 17 point lead for the Trojans. I like Armstrong's compete levels a lot better than it was the first half. And Wiggins steps into a three and nails it. His first three of the game, he has nine points and it's back to 20. They have so many weapons, so many guys who can hit, hit threes. Ware shooting it up short. Preem tipped it over to Kempel. And here's Saw, tough 
Reverse try there. Kempo puts it back up again, no good. And it'll be out of bounds off for Boyzetta. Good hustle by Armstrong there. Got a couple of scrappy offensive rebounds. Luke Prem and Eli Kempo both getting in there, mixing it up. Saw just about out of time. Got it to Newburn. Shot Ooh. fake, drives, he scores, and one. Gonna be a blocking foul as they got there just late, and Newburn hanging in the air, splitting defenders, and scores it. Incredible play, incredible athleticism and body balance. Great footwork there. Just launches his body up into three people, but he got up higher than all of them. Simon ended up being called for the foul. Looked like maybe could have been Wiggins, but they'll take it either way. Newburn has been dynamite in the second half, especially here. Yeah, I like that Armstrong is definitely um, playing tougher and they're, they're not worrying whatever the score is. They, they keep chipping away and battling back, so good for them. Schaefer, the drive, and he finishes. That wasn't bad either, but just a very skillful play. Ware shoveling it over to Kempel, and he lays it in. Nice, nice finish. Assist. Looks like we had a couple football players down there guarding each other. Kempel's and Simon. Wiggins had it knocked away by Ware. He gets it to Newburn. Newburn shoveling it to Kempel, but blocked by Simon from behind. Now the uh, intensity and the pace has picked up a little bit. Schaefer, an open look at a three, spins off. And they had the rebound briefly, but then Ware takes it. Ware scores plus the foul. Beautiful body control by Desmond. And Schnettler. Not liking the call, but let's see if he's set. Oh, he's moving. He's definitely moving. He's sliding his feet to the left. And Desmond took off from far away, so that, you know, he didn't give him time to get his feet set. Yeah, at first I thought they were saying he was inside that restricted circle, but I don't think it was that. I think what you said is more. It was an correct. incredible finish. Very high difficulty shot from taking off from that far away. Ware has been good at the free throw line here tonight. Falcons trim it back to 14. Again, they're not like right on the doorstep, but they've made a game of it again. Yeah, I mean, the way the game started, it looked like it could have been a 30 point blowout or more. Wiggins into the lane, step back jumper won't go. Field, uh, yep, a push off. I thought at first they didn't see it, but I, I think this is definitely the right call. Fields gave that little nudge in the back when somebody's about to jump. Mm. Yeah, Armstrong, in the last couple of minutes, has been getting some turnovers and some stops and rebounds. Speaking of another turnover, turnover, now Duncan up with it. He'll go all the way for the layup. Yeah, 12-point game with eight minutes to go. <laughs> Olmstead with a quick three to answer there, and then a timeout by Brian Schnettler. So, I mean, Zeta seems to have an answer every time. Exactly. Up. If you're Armstrong, you got to get back on D and find those guys. I mean, you can't be happy with just getting a layup. Someone's got to communicate and get out to a wide open Wyzetta guy on the wing on the, on the fast break. But Wyzetta, again, they they play fearlessly though. You know, they shoot threes no matter what, no matter when. I think one of the reasons they feel confident in doing that is because they do crash so many guys to the boards too. And, they, and of course you got McAndrew who's gonna get a lot of rebounds too, but he's not the only one. And then they gotta count on getting back on D. When you crash four, you're susceptible to giving up some layups and they do, they give up some, but they like the fast pace of play, Wyzetta does. Armstrong's not bad in the fast pace of play either, but I think Wyzetta is a little bit better in that style. Mm. 
The Armstrong ball out of the timeout after that need three by Olmstead. He has nine in each half now, total of 18. And such is life as the number one team, too, if you're Wyzetta, you're thinking, well, they didn't play that well, and yet they're still up 15 against a decent team on the road, you know. There into the front court. Ooh, that one nearly got away. We're spinning at it, knocked away. It's going to be out off of Armstrong. Where will be called for the foul as he thought he saw an opportunity for a steal but got into the arm and body of uh, Johnson a little bit there. Yeah, they only have two, now three team fouls, so they can afford to be aggressive, but maybe do that when they're driving to the bucket or something, try to bounce it off their knee. They look to McAndrew. Goes with the left hand. Wow. Look. He's got a little bit of everything in his arsenal. That's beautiful. Yeah, that takes a lot of practice to, to make a little offhand hook shot like that. The winning hoop against Hopkins last week was something similar, although this one was a little bit farther out even. Yeah, he loves the end of games too, I noticed through his career. Olmstead from the baseline, short, but Wiggins is too big for wear inside there, but he missed it. And yeah. it'll be out off Wyzetta. When they study the film of this game, I think that might be the difference in this game is offensive rebounding. Wyzetta has got so many second shots and they've made them pay. Sometimes they've got threes out of them. They yeah. really crashed the board and Armstrong is you know, not quite as big, but they got to do a better job of just getting a body on them. Yeah, when you're already a pretty decent shooting team, but then you get multiple opportunities, that, that can make it very difficult. They're still applying the full court pressure here. I mean, 17, when you're the coach is ahead, it seems like you're ahead by about six. I hooked him a little bit there, got away with it. Ware and Wiggins bumping up court. We're gonna get a foul against Ware. He extended his arm a little bit, but I think also we had a little bit of a flop going on there, but it's a little gamesmanship. That'll be number four on Ware. We're gonna set play here, try to get the ball inside to McAndrew. McAndrew this time spinning with the right hand, and we left it just short. Newburn out of there with it. Newburn, the drive, and he leaves it just short as well. Macbeth grabs it up for the Trojans. So a couple of nice moves at each end, but both players leaving it just short. Olmstead floating it up and in down the middle. Yeah, lack of communication there. The guy just waltzes right in and shoots a one-handed floater with no one picking him up. So, got to communicate better on defense. Duncan, a little step-back jumper, spins in and out. He's got a nice little mid-range game. Olmstead open for a three, and he knocks it down. Got a screen from McAndrew. That's just what I was going to say. It's a great screen, and you got to like it when you're, you know, your best player. McAndrew is willing to set nice hard screens like that and take, take a blow from uh, Newburn too. Newburn with McAndrew on him. They'll rotate it. Now they go to Freeman. It's good Newburn movement. for three he is short. Fields an offensive rebound, but Wiggins denies that one. Yeah, you got like a guard who's 6'4 and can block shots. McAndrew swooping in, he missed it. He gets it back though and scores. He kept that ball up high after he got it. It just got great touch, even falling off balance. He's able to make that shot. Just makes it everything look easy. 84 to 60, Wyzetta. And you kind of feel like maybe they've taken Armstrong's best shot now and Falcon's starting to look tired. 
Yeah, I mean, it's it's good experience for Armstrong to play these guys because there's a good chance that this could be a rematch in the semis. You know, Armstrong is probably going to have to get by Edina, which will be an interesting game. Um, Edina has been playing good. They beat Hopkins and almost beat Wyzetta this year. So it's going to be a – looks like that's going to be the 4-5 in that, and Wyzetta is going to get the 1-8. McBeth will pick up the foul, and let's be honest, I'm intrigued with former Falcons head coach John Bryant leading the Hornets, too, if that matchup proves to, to happen. No doubt about it. I mean, um, Coach Bryant, was, he did a good job here, and he's really doing a good job at Edina. And uh, obviously one of the all-time great players here at Armstrong as well back in the day. True. Wisconsin Badger. And yeah, he's, he's um, definitely going to want to try to beat Armstrong there's no doubt about that and you know Armstrong the same way we're kind of penciling all these matchups in obviously there's still some season to go Ooh, Newburn called for the foul and then bumps with Macbeth a little bit yeah we, we don't know about uh, you know all these matchups are not sure things by any means true but it does seem just fair to say yeah. that that Wyzetta Hopkins and Washburn will be the top three seeds in some order yep and there's a there's kind of a big drop off too after four or five so it looks like it's pretty much what's going to happen it's just a matter of who's going to get the home home game but yeah like you said you got to play it out but we're out, we're only a week and a half away from playoffs or two weeks from today probably McBath hits one out of two Armstrong down now by 25 a couple times they fought back to within 10 but is that a showing why they came in at uh, 22 and one Need a foul call here as Duncan tried to drive that ball. So Duncan will head to the free throw line. Sandman picking up the foul. Eight points now for Charles Duncan. Armstrong, I know next week they play, um, or two of their next games, they play Osseo, then they play Creighton Durham Hall. So those will be good tests too to toughen you up for the playoffs. Of course, Wazetta plays in the tough late conference no matter who they play, it's tough. Turnover here as Olmstead couldn't squeeze that pass. I was a little bit behind him. I'd have to think Schnettler is not happy with the amount of turnovers. I mean, when you're the number one team in the state and you want to win the state championship, you get a little picky, you know, and that's one thing that they have to do a better job because if they turn the ball this over this much against some teams that are a little bit better than Armstrong, they probably won't win those games. We're missing it inside. Schaefer trying to whip it over to McBath. It was tipped but still got there eventually and then back out for Olmstead who misses on a three. Ware leading the break the other way. Newburn will hand it over to Duncan. Step back jumper here, and he hits. Bounced off from McAndrew and able to sink it. Wiggins keeps it rotating to Macbeth, and then he'll get it back eventually. Wiggins for three, no good. There's a good block out by Kempel. That's what they needed more of tonight. They did. Yeah, fundamental. That's nice. Inside, Newburn attacking. McAndrew stood up solid there on D, but Newburn will get it back and score. Yeah, just sure willpower there by Newburn. I like how he just never gives up, no matter what the score is. He plays hard, went and got his a miss, and McAndrew did a great job walling up prior to that. McAndrew shooting it up here, and he nails a three. Yeah, what a great shooting stroke. We're going to see that for a long time. Uh, probably see that on TV a lot. Now, did Coach McDermott? Oh, you to ask about Jackson at any point? No, he never did. <laughs> no. I'm, I'm out of the loop now, but uh, he knew it. It's pretty easy to see how good he is, that's for sure. But, but yeah, Coach McDermott and I go way back to Iowa City. Um, 
when I was um, just out of college and stuff, and he was a young coach coming up, and then he coached at North Dakota, University of North Dakota. And actually his assistant was Ben Jacobson, who's now the UNI coach. Those guys were together. And then when he, when he left to Iowa State, Ben Jacobson got the Northern Iowa job. I always like Creighton as a program. Going back years, I mean, I, I feel like it would be a fun place to play. Yeah. Saw his pass picked off. Great facilities down there in Omaha. And people are mentioning him for the Ohio State job. I hope not. I hope he stays at Creighton personally. Oh, nice dish inside. And Sandman gets the layup. Good unselfish ball there for the Trojans as they hit 90 points. Yeah, they're relentless. They just keep coming after you in waves and play with such extreme confidence. And even if they have some lulls where they maybe lose focus, their skill level and their ability to make threes and just play good basketball, they go on the, quite a few 10-0 runs. Yeah, that's the thing. I mean, I think in a lot of ways you'd say Armstrong's done some good things tonight, but it's going to end up being a you know, 20 plus point loss the way it's looking. And they weren't coming in, you know, wanting a moral victory or anything. And there's Wiggins nailing a three. They wanted to not just compete well, but maybe even pull an upset. And obviously we're not gonna see that happening tonight. No. But now they know what they gotta do, you know, how they can watch film, they can see what Wyzetta did, they can see how they got off to, you know, a poor start and why. If you're Armstrong, and, um, and if you're Wazetta, you can look at the film and look at your great start and say, hey, this is how we got to keep playing the whole game. Duncan attacking. He'll get it back out for Fields for three. He's not been able to hit from outside tonight. You know, when you're the number one seed and as good as Wazetta, and you play the eighth seed who's really not going to be good. It's really, it's two games you got to win to get to state. They have a seven-team section, they have a bye. Oh, I thought they had eight, but yeah, that is weird when you have a seven-team, so they get a bye, so it is just two games, which is actually a one-eight. Sometimes those games are. Yeah, I'm not so sure you wouldn't rather, I mean. Play, yeah, just yeah. to have rhythm. If you're the eight-team, you don't. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I don't know, there's plenty of examples both ways that you could look at and say, see, this is what happens. But I mean, what a loaded section, too. I mean, Hopkins and Wayzata, they could easily be playing for a state championship, and Washburn's having a great season, too. Joel Saw gets that one to drop. Under 10 seconds to play now. Wyzetta is going to not quite reach 100, but they will win this one going away. 95 to 69. Trojans were up 13 at halftime. Armstrong got as close as 10 on a couple of occasions, but then the Trojans really open it back up, and uh, you can kind of see why they are... 22 and one and now 23 and one with this victory here tonight Greg and uh, a, lot of, a lot to like for them certainly uh, you know overall this season too. Just ex extreme skill level for Wyzetta how they share the ball is outstanding. I like how Armstrong competed and you know they didn't give up they kept coming back and used some of their strengths which is defensively being able to get some stops but yeah Wyzetta definitely looks like they're on the road to you know a chance to go to state, but it's, it's hard to even get out of this section. I mean, it's, it's not going to be easy. So best of luck to both of these teams uh, the rest of the regular season, and they'll get ready for that Section 6 4A tournament. We hope you've enjoyed this one tonight here from Armstrong. Again, your final, Wyzetta 95 and Armstrong 69. Good night from Armstrong. <laughs>